Okay, we'll proceed ahead with the session. Uh, before moving ahead, uh, please acknowledge me if my audio, uh, audio is clear to all and my screen is visible properly. Yes, this is clear and visible. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, so uh, good afternoon, everyone. Myself, Rupesh, uh, I'm the host for today's webinar which is Microsoft Azure Data Fundamentals DP900 certification. So we'll start with the introduction about today's session. So before moving ahead into our webinar, let's have a small introduction about our today's event sponsor, Synergetics. So Synergetics is the India's one of kind corporate learning solution company, which helps any industry to get their relevant technological solution and helps to be on top of the competition. We are not only restricted to group trainings, but also our Microsoft certification trainings help every individual professional to succeed in the competitive world. Here are some of the master solutions offered by Synergetics. Onboarding, reskilling solution, certification solution, certification plus add-on solution, cloud adoption, architecting, practice playbook, latest technology training, Emerging Technology Training. So today's webinar is organized by ATC community and sponsored by Synergetics and Microsoft. Our ATC community is open for all the people who are interested in Microsoft Cloud Technologies. If, if you just need to follow, uh, all you have to do is to download and meet up application in your phone. The app is available on Play Store and iOS store you can download the application and you can follow our communities which are as follows so emerging technology community it is for mumbai and common community for all that uh, for everyone azure tech community for pune people Su surat emerging technology community for surat and gujarat people azure tech community nagpur for nagpur cars artificial intelligence ai and microsoft platform community for a people who are interested in ai technologies So this is a small, small code of conduct. Please note that you cannot take the screenshot and you cannot do the uh, screen recording. If you want the recording for this session, we will be uploading it on our YouTube channel and YouTube channel link will be shared in the chat box. Please note this recording will be shared. So please do follow our channel. So you will be informed once it is uploaded. There is one more uh, announcement I want to make. So it is an important message that I want to share with you all. So recently there was an incident happened during our webinar. There was an attendee who is also an employee of well reputed company had contacted some of the other attendees from the session and offered a job options. Guys, please take a note of this. We have already blacklisted this person and if anything that will be violating our policies will be facing strict legal actions. I will request you all to join these sessions with a learning purpose and please do not make such activities which are unprofessional. So let's move ahead. So our agenda for the session is understanding the core concepts, work with relational and non-relational data, security, querying. Our session takeaways will be, will identify the will identify and describe core data concepts such as relational non-relational big data and analytics and explore how this technology is implemented with microsoft azure explore the roles tasks and responsibilities in the world of data explore relational data offerings provisioning and deploying relational databases and querying relational data through cloud data solution with microsoft azure Explore non-relational data offerings, provisioning and deploying non-relational database and non-relational data stores with Microsoft Azure. Explore the processing options available for building data analytics solution in Azure. So today's speaker for the webinar is Mr. Umprakash Pandey. So Umprakash sir is highly experienced Microsoft certified trainer with decades of rich experience in technical learning and implementation consultations across India and the globe. His teaching experience spans across more than 50,000 students and 200 expert enterprises around the world. 
currently is working with synergetics as an avp of delivery department so now you can grow professionally by adding the latest technolo technology skills with microsoft various certifications you can enroll for any of these training programs with synergetics where you will be experiencing live interactive sessions with the best industry mcts trust trust us and will deliver the best so our course calendar for the month is as follows you can see the screen these are the topics uh, for which we provide the trainings so anyone who's interested in any of the topics they can contact me on the number uh, that will be shared in the chat box you can whatsapp me even on the same number please refer to the topics and any other query if you have regarding the training you can contact me on the same number so this is our webinar cal uh, series calendar for the year 2021 our next cert ready webinar that is happening on 25th of september please take a note of the date and time is 10 Uh, 10 a.m. Actually, uh, it's mistakenly mentioned. Uh, it will be starting in the morning, 10 a.m., and it will be for two hours, 10 a.m. to 12 in the noon. Uh, topic will be administrating relational databases on Microsoft Azure DP 300 certification. So, people who are interested in this technology, they can register themselves. We will be sharing the registration link in the chat box. So now uh, I would like to hand over the mic to Om Prakash sir. Thank you everyone for paying attention. Sir, you can proceed. Hello everyone. I hope I'm audible to you all. Yes, sir. Your yes, voice is clear. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much for joining on time. I'm really excited to see so many people on a Saturday where you all can would have chosen. to take a deep nap but everybody is wants to learn new technologies wants to get certified and make sure they move ahead in life especially in terms of technology with leaps and bounds as far as uh, microsoft azure is concerned there has been lot of streams which microsoft has come up with in recent days or i would say in recent years where they have segregated each of these certification topics barring development barring infrastructure deployment and administration right so there are a lot of new streams that you will see certificate in terms of certifications where we have data related certifications right architecting certifications where we have certifications for data science data engineering artificial intelligence so there are so many streams for certifications that people have been seeing in microsoft today in our today's session the focus area is data fundamentals this will help us lay a foundation for what are the options available for data storage solutions within microsoft azure environment i don't have to mention about myself rupesh has already done thanks rupesh for it i am already an azure architect i am also azure developer and i am also a earlier sharepoint architect i have been working with more than 20 odd years in this field and i'm glad to inform that i have assisted lot of people in these areas because many of them come from various streams but are confused at times that which of the options would be good for us right how do we go ahead what are the options over here and i can guide them through it i have a complete team of number of trainers that we have we work with more than 50 plus trainers internal and external who deliver varied sessions across the globe on number of technology areas we are guided by our abb technology mr navyoti barua and we have our great marketing team manish rupesh who have been making sure we reach out to more and more people across the globe using number of channels which are available right now as part of az as part of db900 session this is about azure data fundamentals this is a complete course if you see is a entire one day course and some of these courses we have been doing internally 
I'm sure Manish and Rupesh will reach out to y'all for how y'all can attend these sessions. There are a lot of Microsoft resources also available that y'all can go through. As I go ahead, I will be sharing some of these information with y'all, which will be helpful to y'all in terms of reading it, in terms of understanding those concepts. If you see the core objectives, the more important aspects here is describing the core data concepts. Once this data concept is clear with everybody, once people are aware about what is polyglot persistence, how do you make sure that for a single application, you can have more than one data stores you can connect to, you can store your information, perform CRUD operations with that, right? That's the most important aspect that we are going to look at in today's session. Second very important entity is understanding relational data, right? I have one of my colleagues, Meena Lufale, who's our RDBMS specialist in this area. She'll be joining in soon. Third and very important aspect here is looking at non-relational data because relational data has been there for a very, very long time. People have been working with that. People have been implementing those resources time and again, right? And it would it would make sense for a number of organizations. At the same time, people have also realized that beyond certain point in time, a lot of advantages or the features that they're looking for from RDBMS perspective, they are not able to get it. That's why they are moving towards different set of algorithms, different storage mechanisms using non-relational data. We are going to discuss about some of them as part of our session so that you all can relate to it and you all can leverage those solutions, leverage those options when you're looking at architecting your data storage options or consider one of these members when you are designing your data storage solution. Next important aspect that we have, which is part of the course, but when we are not going to touch upon that in today's session, is building a modern data warehouse. So I have already requested Rupesh and Manish to organize a separate session where we can talk about in-depth details about big data solutions, analytic solutions, right? And especially integration of IoT and big data solutions in our upcoming sessions. So we'll have a separate dedicated session for those entities as well. If you all have an immediate requirement, you all can share your details with Manish and Rupesh so we can organize such kind of sessions for your organization. Being very, very precise and specific. I request all of you all, please keep yourself on mute. Thank you. So we can deliver such kind of custom sessions, custom solutions, custom learning solutions for your consulting team, for your implementation team, especially for your organization. As part of the core agenda that you will see, like I mentioned earlier, core data concepts, relational data in Azure, right? Working with non-relational data. And finally, data warehouse solution for analytics section. As far as Power BI is concerned, Power BI is just a quick overview over here in this certification paper. As far as the depth of Power BI is concerned, we have an entire, Microsoft has an entire different set of certification for it, which is DA100. That's where Power BI, there is, I think, three to four days of complete session on Power BI, where we talk about data visualization, custom visuals, right? In-depth process for it. As part of the entire learning process that we have for, a set, for the entire day, we have a lab environment as well. But in today's session, we'll have a quick overview within two hours, whatever, maximum touch points we can help you all to understand. We'll do that. So keeping this context in mind, let's proceed ahead. So before we get into the session, let me share a few important links for you all. The first and very important aspect that you'll see is the exam details, DP900, So on the links on the chat window. I'm sure everybody is able to access the chat. Yes, 
Manish and Rupesh are also putting up very, very important entities over there. And as far as this web page is concerned, it is very, very important because it provides you entire details in terms of what will be the skills measured, what is the percentage or what is the weightage of each of these points as uh, from a perspective of your exam. If you scroll below, there's already set of learning path which is being shared by Microsoft for core concepts, relational, non-relational data, and finally data warehouse. So four very, very simple but important modules that you have over here. So you can do, do the learning on your own. I doubt you'll have any labs over here. So for the labs, you can enroll it with us. We can provide you those required details so that we can work together on that. From a skills perspective, as I mentioned, the link is already there within the first page. I'm also mentioning it separately. So in case somebody wants to go into details of when you say 50 to 20 percent wages, what does what gets covered inside that? Right. So here if you'll see describing the batch data, streaming data, right? What is the characteristics of relational data? What would be the kind of questions or requirements one should be clear when they are looking for data storage solutions? When you're talking about data analytics core concepts in terms of data visualization, business intelligence solutions, right? What are various analytics techniques that you have over here, right? In terms of ETL and ELT based processing, these are very, very important elements to decide before we go for analytic solutions. How are they going to work? What are the options that we have over there? Right? So all this information, all these topic wise breakup you will find. On the link which I have shared with you all. As far as the complete course is concerned, these are the options for the course. Right now we are delivering these courses in a VLT mode, making sure that people being at their home, right? Avoiding any kind of physical contact with anybody else, being away from any kind of COVID issues, right? We provide all these trainings in a VLT manner, backed up by specific labs where people, though they are missing out in terms of the classroom session, but they should not miss out on the experience that they get with the classroom, right? So learning the core concepts, seeing all these things as part of visuals, concept visuals as we call them, which is the speciality at Synergetics. At the same time, we also make sure that people are able to implement these things within their environment with proper hands on. Within a single day, we don't discuss too many case studies, but once it comes to two days or three day kind of session, they can also implement an end to end case study. Keeping these topics in mind. So in which scenarios we will be using a relational options, RDBMS option, in which places we'll be using non-relational data, right? What are the options available for it and how do we implement that? Fourth module, data warehousing solutions. And Hello. And technologies that we have within our. Yes. Sorry, I have a question. Um, can I ask? Can I take up the question later? I'm sorry for sure. that. I'll park it then. Thank because you. We might, yeah, we might fall short sure. on time. So you I'll take up the questions sorry. later. Sorry for that. Sure. That's okay. So as part of this entire session, within four modules, the most important foundations of uh, databases is being laid down over here. I already mentioned about the learning path. So here you'll see there is already a pre-existing resources which Microsoft has provided associated with the documentation, associated with the learning path. So you can go through these links for each of these members is available on the ma main page itself. So from there you can go to any of these resources. Look at the options provided by Microsoft over here. You can try out these and LGDs. Most of you all, if I may assume, are already being working with RDBMS for a very, very long time. But in this case, you'll be able to look at these options, look at these solutions from a Microsoft perspective. Right? And what do I mean by that? Using some of the open source products, 
using cloud based solutions over here which automatically answers the questions about scalability, reliability, right? Bottomless data store, right? Easy connectivity, right? Using existing tools and solutions, which we have been working with in past with the new kind of environment, right? So bringing cloud into perspective, make sure it is easier for everybody to work with it. It is easier for people to leverage on the cloud benefits in much more simpler and smoother manner. Right. So this would be one of the most important aspects which I would recommend all of you all to go through. As part of the Microsoft learning path. This is a freely available. Courses that you all can go through. Based on the timelines that you all have. Right. Even if you all go through a single module or two or three modules in a day. That should be possible. So once we are through these resources, let's proceed ahead. Go to the first module over here, which is exploring the core data concepts within Microsoft Azure environment. Now, once it comes to cloud solutions, I already mentioned about some of the core attributes of it. Now, moving ahead with the data solutions, right? What are the core data concepts? That is what we are going to discuss about moving ahead. Next important members that we'll be discussing about, like Rupesh currently mentioned, is exploring the roles and responsibilities in world of data. Third important member is about RDBMS and non RDBMS, or I would say SQL and no SQL kind of implementations. The last and very important point that we're going to talk about is exploring the concept of data analytics. So these are some of the core elements that we're going to discuss in the upcoming timelines that we have before I open this forum for any kind of questions. As far as data is concerned, this is not something new for us. There has been ages where we have been working with different kind of data options, different kind of facts that we have, numbers that we have. Each and every object that we create, we have number of attributes captured for that object. Right, any kind of description that you would want to mention, we can uh, describe those uh, contents over here, describe those elements over here. But once it comes to storage of data, everybody starts thinking that RDBMS is the only place where we can save data. OK, I, I'm not sure why that problem is. And even if you look at the. Prior mechanisms apart from file storage. Right apart from file storage, shared file storage, network file storage, everything else has been. Stored within RDBMS. Correct. So the moment once you receive the data. While the developer team will start working with classes, objects, relationships between those classes, right? What will be the message methods that will be passed? What parameters has to be passed? While they are working on that, there will be a parallel team who is working on what will be the entities, what will be the relationship between the entities, and start creating ER diagrams for it. Once that is being done, how do you normalize the data? Right in different set of normal forms. Now, once the data is being stored, people will start looking at how do we make sure that certain information or certain details like images, video files, audio files, even that can be pushed into RDBMS. But what we forget there is there will be there will always be set of data which is not suitable for RDBMS solution. We will have to look at some of the new options over here. We have to look at some of the other solutions over here. Which can help us store all these details in an effective manner. Correct. So that's what I'm referring to is as in terms of inst uh, unstructured data. Where we have user profiles, where we have images, where you'll have uh, audio information, video information that is unstructured data. Between these structured and unstructured data, 
you have another member over here, which is semi-structured data in terms of documents, in terms of columnar store, or looking at resources like hierarchy, looking at resources where we are talking about documents, right? JSON based documents, which, which can have large amount of nesting for itself. So graph based database, columnar stores, there are different kind of data which people would want to store, which they are not being able to do currently. So keeping this context in mind, you have three basic types, structured, unstructured, and semi-structured. If you look at your transactions, okay, just give me a moment before I proceed ahead. Now the question over here would be, like I said, there are different types of data or once the requirements are being captured, the question is what, how do we know which of these options is a right option? How do we decide that? Now for that, do you need to ask specific set of questions over here, right? Now what will be those questions? So here, if you look at the Microsoft documentation, Microsoft has very clearly mentioned that as an individual, as an organization, as a requirement gathering team, what should be your questions to the respective stakeholders? So there has to be questions specific to data format. There has to be questions specific to data size, scale, structure, relationships. What is the consistency model that you want to achieve? Do you want to, are you looking at eventual consistency? Are you looking at guaranteed asset properties? Atomicity, consistency, isolation, durability. Are you looking at schema less or flexible schema kind of storage? Right, but these will be in terms of functional requirements. Similarly, we also need to ask questions in terms of non functional requirement. When you're asking about non functional requirements, you'll be very, very clear in terms of how and what should be the right solution for the customer. Now, if you all look at the term, which is solution, we cannot create a solution unless we know the problem well. So the only way of creating a good solution would be by providing a, by asking relevant questions, which will help us to diagnose, which will help us to find out what is going wrong. And once you know what is going wrong, then you'll be able to provide a right solution. Right. So third thing that you'll see here is management and cost. Is the customer looking for portability? Is the customer worried about licensing? Is the customer worried about cost effectiveness? So what is the problem area which exists on the customer side? Once you know those kind of problems, you'll be able to address them using a right kind of solution. Right. So even on the first slide that you see, there are so many questions that one needs to ask. Another important aspect which could be very critical for the customer is in terms of security and compliance requirement. Once it comes to data, if this data is being accessible to a wrong person, right, it can create chaos within the organization. A lot of hidden secrets or uh, most of the critical aspects of an organization, they can get leaked out. And that could that could become a very, very important problem. That could become a very disastrous situation for various organizations. So we will have to make sure that the data that we have captured is highly secured and accessible only to restricted set of people. People do go ahead and create a demilitarized zone, DMZ, to make sure only relevant access is being provided. And finally, how do we make sure we associate a DevOps over here, a DevOps solution where you can have though the data is within the database, as far as the stored procedures are concerned, triggers are concerned, cursors are concerned. These things are part of your DevOps environment. So at runtime, whenever needed, we can deploy them on the customer environment. Whether it is production environment, staging environment, or your testing environment. 
So first thing I would recommend is before you start choosing, before you start looking at what are the options. Which will help us to provide a solution. Please make a note of the. Questions that one needs to ask. And once you have these questions with you and believe me, guys, this question set is very, very small. The question set will be much more larger. What I don't have here is a domain specific questions. So if the customer is coming from a manufacturing domain. They are coming from uh, aerospace domain or coming from research domain. Right banking and finance domains. So depending upon which kind of domain you are. Uh, looking at the questions will change. You'll have more number of questions here. Whom should I ask this question? These questions have to be asked to the DB admin team, information workers, because they would be the right stakeholders who will provide you this details. So I hope this makes sense to you all. Let me proceed ahead. So in terms of data, right? So what is this data all about? And what data needs to be captured within your system? What is the scope of it? How is it going to how is it going to help or assist the entire organization? Those things will be clear via these functional and non-functional requirements. Now, once it comes to data storage, there are two basic elements over here. One is your OLTP based sources, OLTP based storage and cloud operations, and then you have OLAP processes, right? Or OLAP data processing. As far as OLTP is concerned, this is your day to day transaction that we are looking at, or day to day access to the content that we are looking at. Whereas if you're looking at OLAP perspective, this is more from an analysis perspective, right? Analysis of historical data, analysis of recent data, analysis of archived information. That you have. Right, so those kind of things will be part of your. OLAP implementation. As far as OLTP is concerned, though it shows. The relational data or RDBMS kind of implementation. It's not a compulsion. As far as online transaction processing is concerned, this could be unstructured data. This could be semi structured data as well. Right, so don't get uh, constrained by the diagram which is being displayed over here. In case of. Unstructured data or semi structured data, the way of accessing that information would be different. The way of connecting to that data sources or data stores will be different. You have respective APIs for it. You have respective tools for it. So as we go ahead, we'll talk about these things in more details. So if you look at your OLAP versus OLTP, what is this OLTP all about? OLTP basically is more in terms of day in day out operation where the focus is in terms of fast processing. Right, I should be able to perform. Operations in terms of inserts, updates and any kind of deletions which I want to perform. Right, so that's the focus area over here once it comes to. OLTP environment. Now, since the focus is on inserts, updates and delete, we need to make sure we are having a database or, or uh, I would say the tables that we are creating should be normalized. Right, so you have first normal form, second normal form. You have third normal form. You have voice code normal form. So which kind of normalization would you want to use over here? That would be your decision. Along with that. What we are working with is day in day out operations, the current data that you have. And this will help you to create a smooth business process for your environment. Right. As far as OLAP is concerned, OLAP basically is about. Not always, I would say, but in most scenarios, it is about historical data. Where you want to do analytical processing or analyze why something has happened, diagnose some things that if something like this has happened, what could be the reason for it? What would have gone wrong? Right here, the focus is more in terms of select queries. Here, the focus is more in terms of retrieving information rather than inserts, updates and deletes. So 
So if you look at business versus the organization perspective, right? So here, if you see that you have four options, you have OLTP resources, right? ODS resources, right? Your business intelligence solutions, BI, and finally analytics. So if you look at the previous slides that we have been talking about, we have been focusing on OLTP versus OLAP. There are two things that we've been talking about. Here, you'll realize there are two more members. Here we have two more members over here, which is ODS and your business intelligence solutions. So if you look at your OLTP, we already mentioned about it. High concurrency, linear scaling, right? You may have number of parallel processing over here only in case of web scale. Major thing that we said, keyed updates. If you look at ODS and BI, these are two important members over here. So ODS, that is your other data solution that you have, it can be transactionals. The time over here, the time that we are looking at over here, maybe up to seconds, even if it takes some more time, we are okay with that. As far as the customer experience is concerned, it is mostly internal to the business scenarios. If you look at your processing over here, we are looking at multi parallel processing. From a BI perspective, business intelligence, which is one of the key members as we go ahead, will be it will be more in terms of non-transactional kind of resources. This is more in terms of finding out what would have gone wrong, finding out how the entire environment is behaving. And now you see the time taken is not just in sub-seconds, but now it has gone to minutes. I'm sure many of you, uh, now the question could be, Om Prakash, are you sure what you're talking about? Are you saying that customers are okay if you go ahead and give them a response back in minutes? or hours rather than giving them the response back in uh, seconds? And my answer would be yes, it is definitely that way. So let me give up a give a scenario over here. Everyone, if you go to respective banking sites today, right? Most banking sites would provide you details where they say that if you want to access information about your transactions that in the last week or last month, I can show it to you right now. But if you're looking at anything beyond this month, say today's 4th of September. So for month of August, if you want any information, we can provide you. Anything beyond August, can you please go to our another link where you can find information about last one year? If you want to um, load information about last five years, there is, a, there is another link for it. Okay. If you want data about last 10 years, there is another link for it. And people are OK with clicking on those links. Downloading information from there where it says, Om Prakash, I'm sorry, I will take a minute to give you that information. Please don't log off or even if you have to log off, give me your email address or give me your residential address. We will courier it to you. Are you OK with it? Customer says, yes, I don't have a problem. Right. Earlier, what was the thinking that if customer is saying I need information and he, sh he should be able to go keep going back last 10 years, 15 years, and he should he or she should see the data immediately. It's no more a compulsion. It's no more a compulsion. Correct. So customers do understand that loading so much of information in memory for so many customers is nearly impossible. Or even if it is possible, it will kill the performance. The site will be dead slow and we don't want that to happen. Even if it takes two or three minutes and I can download that as an Excel file, I can download that content as a PDF file, I am okay. Right? But you'll have to make sure you have those options. Now, you are not allowing the user to go beyond one or two months. Neither are you allowing the user to download that information. Then there is a problem. 
So that information has to be made available. How you are going to do that? That choice is yours. So I hope that makes sense. So in terms of OLTP, in terms of ODS, what we are looking at is what is required for operating the business. And that has to be immediate. That has to be in seconds, not beyond that. Secondly, how to improve performance of the company. Right, that's BIN analytics. As, as we go ahead, we'll talk about more in details of what is analytics and what can we expect from it? What are the options available? So these things will give you more clarity. We already mentioned about transaction workloads, so I can quickly put up these points over here. As far as transactional workloads are concerned, they are targeted towards asset properties. The first one is atomicity, right? Where every transaction is part of a single unit, which, which may not hold true for a lot of other large scale or complex document processing or complex schema processing that we have. Second is consistency. As far as consistency is concerned, what it clearly says is if there are multiple copies of the data, all the copies have to be updated at the same time before going back to the user. So all copies of the data has to be consistent, has to be same. Only then we can go back to customer saying, yes, the insert has been successful or the update or delete has been successful. Even uh, in the uh, in current scenarios, you'll realize that even consistency people are saying we are OK if the consistency is session consistency. We are OK if the consistency is eventual consistency. What am I saying? What I'm saying is eventually if the data is. Unified or data is common on all the copies, I'm OK with it. Now people will say that oh, Prakash, are you in your senses? Yes, I am. It, I'm not saying it will be relevant for a financial application. It will be relevant for some other kind of application where these things are OK. These things are which is people are acceptable. No issues, no problem. Simple example of session consistency would be. If somebody is going and uploading their profile picture. On WhatsApp or Facebook or any such social site. Do you start getting the likes or dislikes immediately? The second or millisecond that you post the like, post the link or the photo over there, you don't. It takes time, right? Somebody may revert back on it. Or I liked it in five minutes. Some of them maybe may revert back in ten minutes. Some of them may revert back in ten, two minutes, three minutes. What do you mean by that? It actually gives a meaning. There are actually two <laughs> two things behind the scene. One is that person was not logged into Facebook or they may not have seen the WhatsApp message. That's one. Second is. If, even if the user was even if the another user was logged in, the content was not refreshed at that time. The content refresh took time and the next user could see it after five minutes or after 10 minutes. That is what is called as eventual consistency. Eventually it will be there, but right now it's not there. OK. That's called as eventual consistency. In case of session consistency, people will see himself or herself that when I am logged into the session, I can see the change has done. The photo has been uploaded, but others will see it later. That's called a session consistency. In case of banking or financial transactions, it will not work. That's where it will have strong consistency requirement. Immediately it should happen. Third and fourth options. There's no debate on that. Isolation, yes, it should be there. Durability, once it is committed, it will remain committed. It should not get deleted automatically. If it gets deleted or some, uh, it gets updated automatically, then which means there is some problem. But automis automicity and consistency, this can be modified. This can be changed. In case of analytical workloads, like I mentioned earlier, this will be more in terms of understanding the summary of information. Summarizing lot of details which has been done. Now many a times 
as part of business team what they would be seeing is om prakash manish rupesh each of them will come and say boss i have worked very very hard throughout the year correct now how do they prove their point so one of one of the easiest ways of doing that would be they will say okay can i drop a report how many linkedin profiles have been how many linkedin uh, requests have been shared every day how many sharing have been done by manish and rupesh themselves and how much they could achieve through other trainers let's drop a data and using that data we will be able to find out okay weekly how much work they have done what was the impact of it bi weekly or monthly how much they have done quarterly how much they have done what was the outcome of that right six monthly or yearly how much they work they have done just because they are saying they have overworked i will not believe it as a avp delivery i would say boss please show me your data should back up whatever you are saying right now or otherwise it is just uh, just fake for me right along with that with their efforts growing in what is the trend how how well known is synergetics in the market how many people know us for data data solutions how many people know us from power bi solutions perspective do we have increase in inquiries in those areas right i'm sorry i'm using uh, examples from my business because i am well versed with that each business domain would have similar kind of data analysis and based on that we will be able to make appropriate decisions so there are more number of inquiries coming in for data solution but we only have 10 resources right now on that area and all of them are booked for multiple months through through uh, through an year so that quick that gives an indicator to om prakash saying that we should hire more people in that area right there are more people who are asking for business analytics solution or power bi rather than asking for rdbms concepts which means we should hire people with that kind of capability with those kind of skills so this is how we can ensure that whatever data has been captured from day in day out how do us, how do, does that help us take decisions okay now some of the examples which i have given from my domain you all can apply to your specific domains in terms of manufacturing sector product sectors that you have uh, it services in case you are delivering right project, project management or product service product based services if you are providing so based on that you all can map this say that yes how this is going to make sense for my environment now just collecting this information is one aspect doing analysis is another another aspect which is most important but between that we'll have to do something called as data processing so before the data is available for analysis and can throw up relevant information for decision making we will need to make sure that we have to do some kind of data processing over here now as part of this data processing what are we performing what tasks we are doing here so as part of your processing that we are doing is first and very important thing after capturing data earlier it was easy because we had only one place where all the data is being stored which is rdbms that is not true anymore now what is happening the data is scattered the data is scattered in multiple sources so some data will be available in rdbms solutions like sql virtual machine or sql server and sql databases on top of it right it could be in sql banish uh sql managed instance right there will be some data which is available as part of storage solutions so we will have to pull data from number of data sources after we have pulled the data from multiple data sources we we'll need to start doing the processing here right now what is the processing what we are doing right the processing that we are doing is first is cleaning up the data removing unwanted information adding relevant details over here right that will be the first and very very important step 
in terms of these batch processing, how much time are you investing in doing this batch processing? Correct. What are the date? And if there is, if it takes too much of time, I will always recommend please automate it. Instead of doing it yourself, right? Please automate these kind of things. And there are number of automation solutions which are available within Microsoft Azure platform, which can assist you do that. Second and very important member here is doing the stream processing, right? So as far as the current data sources are concerned, there can be an option for streaming data as well. Now, what do you mean by streaming data? Streaming data basically would mean you have textual data which is streaming like log files. It could be audio inputs, audio uh, uh, details which is coming from an IoT. It could be a video coming from a video feed coming from a camera. Correct. So there could be number of options over here, number of resources over here where you would need to do stream processing. So if that stream data which is coming in throws up some unwanted or critical kind of scenario through an image, we can go ahead and we can go ahead and remove that information, remove those details from there. OK, or we can raise an alert. Let me give an example here. So if I have a stream processing for any information coming from a nearest ATM, correct? So if the ATM box is being heated. There will be sensors which will throw up the data. If somebody goes inside the ATM with helmet on his head, that should be raising an alert. If somebody tries to break open that box. Right. There should be an alert that should be raised, right? So this is something which is called a stream processing. So immediately as the information is being saved, as the information is being received, we should be able to raise an alert on that. So as far as batch processing is concerned, this could be historical. Whereas stream processing could be at times very, very real time. It should happen immediately. And we should be able to take action on it. Right? So these are basic elements in terms of data processing. Now moving on to the next section here, I hope by now everybody is understanding what are the options available? Difference between OLTP and OLAP systems, right? Let's now move on to the next lesson over here and understand about the data job roles that you have and what is the common tasks which a data engineer has to do. If you look at the key roles over here, there are database administrators, DBAs. You have your data engineers and we have respected data analysts. As far as database administration is concerned, they will have to now you can go back to the list of questions and you will have questions relevant to each and every role over here. What are the important members that you'll see over here as part of database administration? will be database management. Now what what includes as part of database management? So when you are creating database, how much size do you are you allocating for it? 5 GB, 10 GB, 100 GB, 1 TB. Are you going for something like RAID disks over here? Right? Are you going for elastic pool for creating the required infrastructure for it? That be the first and very, very important decision to make. Are you going for virtual machines? Are you that is IS as a service infrastructure as a service? Are you going for platform as a service, which is past solutions? Right, so that will be first aspect in terms of database management. And some of the questions which I mentioned earlier will help you all decide which of these options or which of these solutions will be a right solution or, uh, or right selection in terms of database management. In terms of now once that resource is being created, then we go ahead for data security. 
how are you going to secure that information? How, you, how are you going to make sure that any information that goes inside that system is only by a right person or a right application? What are the options for backup? What are the options for making sure that you have precautionary measures taken that in case the, some, uh, some data gets corrupted, we should be able to return back to the previous state, right? With minimum data loss. In terms of user access, like I already mentioned, this is more to do with authentication, right? In terms of data security, another important aspect over here would be encrypting that data and making sure you'll be able to access that information or only users who have the option for decryption, only they should be able to access that content. Most important, monitoring performance of this application, performance of your resources that we mentioned earlier. If the data is not part, if the resource is not performing to the highest potential, what are the other options that we can do? Can we do, uh, can we enhance that by adding partitioning? Can we increase the size of the virtual machine? Can we increase the core of the machine that has been given to us? Or choose, uh, make it move into a respective plan that you would want? How can you enhance the performance of your existing data, data solution? Right, so those things we can do over here. <clears throat> Especially once it comes to RDBMS, RDBMS has been there for ages. So people have been working with it and they are already aware how much data it can store. What are the options for enhancing it? There are a lot of no, uh, no SQL kind of data stores as well. Where the big problem over here will be how much, how much data can we store? And how much time or what is the processing capability required by the underlying system to help you process that information? Tabular data processing in terms of rows and columns, in terms of joins with other members is much, much easier as compared to doing the processing for things like MongoDB, things like Cassandra, correct? Now, what is the problem there? The problem here, the problem there is there is no proper structure. There's no proper schema. That's why the size of data is much, much larger. And that's the reason why many of them are slowly and steadily shifting towards cloud-based data solutions because cloud as an option, cloud as a uh, as an environment is giving you solutions for these basic issues in terms of storage size, in terms of processing requirements. It provides us with those kind of details, right? So that's what is in terms of database administration. As far as database data engineering is concerned, here we have respective pipelines. We have data ingestion storage, right? Preparing data for analytics is concerned. These are the kind of things which data engineer will do. If you remember, I already mentioned about cleaning up the data. Yep, that's actually part of preparing data for analytics. In terms of data ingestion store, you may have specialized members like Data Lake, which are targeted towards Ingestion. In terms of Azure Data Factory, you can have data pipelines, right? And you can have respective processes over here. If you look at data analysts, so once this preparation of data is being done, cleansing of data is being done, right? Whatever uh, scripts that you want to run over here is being done. Then we can go for data analysis, okay? As far as yeah, many a times, whatever we are looking at from a normalization perspective need to be unnormalized once it comes to a data engineering perspective, right? Certain places where you don't have the values there, we will need to add value. And wherever you have, say, null values, you have to replace that null value with a zero or some other relevant information. Because if you don't have those details, you do, if you don't have unnormalized resources, it might become difficult for you, difficult for a uh, member as data engineer to help the analyst build such kind of reports. 
in terms of data modeling for analysis. Right. So here you, here you need to check for. What will be the. Primary elements which I will require to answer some of the common queries by the stakeholder. So we start creating those members over here. Right. And once we have the right kind of data, we can associate that create an uh, uh, sorry associate that with appropriate visuals and we can show those visuals as part of your dashboards as part of your reports. If you look at the common tools that we have. So one of the important tools I let me start from the right hand side is Azure portal where or uh, using that Azure portal as a resource, you'll go and create your SQL Server. You can go and create your SQL database, right? And once that database is being created, you can go ahead and start using tools like Azure Data Studio, your SQL Server Management Studio, right? Which which we have been using for the ages to connect to your new resource. So new resource creation does not ask for a new tool. It says, Om Prakash, if you have already been using with SSMS or Management Studio, continue using the same. Just give me a moment here. I think this is the right juncture. Where. I can quickly show you a demo. If you see the options available, SQL databases, SQL server, elastic pool, you have SQL managed instance. You have. Stretch databases over here. For my demo, which I want to show, let me start off with SQL databases. Let's create a database here. And everybody should be able to realize that though the initial set of steps might seem different, but once it gets created, connecting it using any resource will become easy for us. Okay. Let me take up a new resource group, which is a logical resource group. This is a logical grouping for number of resources within Azure platform. Database name. Whatever name you want to give here. To make it unique. For this database will require a server. So let's create a server here. Let me specify the login name. Let me specify the password here. Location, whatever you all want to choose over here. In my case, let me take Southeast Asia. <clears throat> so once we have made provision for it. Here, if you see the next option, very, very important. It says Om Prakash, what do you want to choose for compute and storage? If you look at the options available. You have options for provision, you have options for serverless. So what is the range that you would want to create? Now this will help you to get the required processing power. OK, this is more to do with the processing power that we have. What is the data storage that you are looking for? So one is processing for uh, cursors, triggers, 
or any other query execution that you that you want to do. So how much is the CPU that you'd want? That's over here. And next one is. What is the data size you want to store? So if this option satisfies your requirement, we can go ahead with it. OK, so what is missing here? Oops, backup storage replication. So do you want geodendency or zone or LRS? Let me choose LRS here. Let me go ahead and initiate the creation over here. So by now what we have been seeing is two things very important. One is the compute power and second is the. Data storage that we are looking at. So these are two important aspects when you're creating a database. Using Azure environment. This might take a time. This might take some time. Let me also parallelly start with another resource for NoSQL data storage. Same resource group, data RG. Whatever name you want to give. I'll keep all of them default right now. Can you see this? There's an option of encryption over here. I'll come to this part a bit later. So while the, both these elements are getting created, one for RDBMS or SQL data store, second for no SQL data store. I'll continue further with my discussion. <clears throat> so you have. Number of tools which are available. Which will help you to. Connect to your environment, so SSMS I have already initiated. Azure Data Studio. Right? So set of tools. If you can help us to create our resources. Right? So I have already initiated those members. So once it comes to your tools, you can uh, make use of SQL Server Management Studio. You can make use of Visual Studio as well. Right, Visual Studio 2019. There also you have Data Explorer, right? And within that environment, you can create your relevant components. Now, uh, the reason why I put this uh, slide over here is to help you understand that using these standard tools, whether if you have Toad or any other tool for RDMS solution, you can use any of your existing environments. And this applies to MongoDB, Cassandra, Neo. Gremlin as a tool. So any of your existing tools that you have, which is relevant for RDBMS solutions, we can utilize that. We can capitalize on those existing environments. OK, and this is the beauty of what we have as part of your. Cloud based solutions, so learning newer areas, the, uh, taking your resources, migrating these components onto cloud. At the same time, we are still connected to your on premises environment, we are able to use these resources from existing components. When we are talking about creation of new elements, right? We can continue directly working further on the cloud platform itself. 
Okay. So once our environment is ready, I can show you what are the options available inside that. So you can see it. So you have the database over here. So one way is you can go to the resource group. Second way is you can directly go to the set of services over here. I can see the database service available. I can go to the query editor over here. Connect to my existing environment. Oops, so it says cannot open server. Request for the login. So it says this particular login. Is not being added in the firewall, so I can go ahead. Add this IP address. By using set server firewall rule. Which will allow my laptop. Which will allow my laptop to add details within it or access the. Component. So we are once we're done with it. Let me go back to the database. Let me go to the query editor once again. OK, so here. Within your environment, you should be able to see the respective. Tables, views, stored procedures, right? So whatever resources one would have created. We can see it here. And you can create as many number of such databases as you'd want. Let me take up one more database. LRS. Add client IP address. Yes. If you want to go for Azure Defender for SQL, you can add it over here. If you want a sample database to be created, we can specify that. And I'm creating the second database on the same server. Or if you want to create a new server, you can do that as well. So these are the ways and means of how we can create set of resources and work with them. While the second database is getting created. Let me show you all the connectivity. How we can do that. So if you all see that you have an option for connection strings. So from a database uh, development perspective. From an uh, application development perspective. We need to hand over this connection strings. To the development team and they will be able to connect to the database by using this connection by using their application. If you want to use the pre existing tools like. SQL server server name. Authentication type SQL login. Which database you want to connect to? We can mention that. Can you see this? So you have OMP Manish DB, you have sample DB, we have the master database as well. So you can use any of the tools that you have available with you. 
You see that? The previous one, I did not have anything. But in this case, I'll do this update later. I can go to the tables. I can check for respective tables which are already being created. And you'll be able to see pretty similar thing like your SQL Server Management Studio. Let me go back to SSMS. Open it somewhere. Yeah, here it is. Our name, SQL Server Authentication. So as far as choice of the tools is concerned, you decide which tool you'd want to use to connect. Right, so one is Manish DB, which is empty, and second is Sample DB, which has the tables. Same set of options are available. So you can either go to your Azure portal, CLI, or you can go to your management studio. In case you want to add or get the same kind of table, uh, same kind of associations being showcased over here. One to many, many to many, many to one. So whatever joins, whatever associations we might have built, all those things we can see here. In terms of data engineering, if you look at the options available here, you have your Azure SQL Server Management Studio is still there, which is, remains the common member. Along with that, you have your Azure portal. The new member that you'll see over here is your Azure Synapse Studio, right? Which is helping you for uh, association with Data Factory, association with Spark pool or SQL pools that you have, right? This is more in terms of data cleansing or building pipelines for data, right? That's when it goes to Synapse Studio. If you look at set of technologies behind the scene, there are a number of them. And if you see the options available along with Microsoft Azure, there are a lot of other cloud solutions which will assist you in doing these steps, help you perform these options. If you look at micro, right now, since our focus is Microsoft Azure, I'll talk about that. If you look at the solutions over here, integration with Apache Spark using Databricks, integration with Hadoop using HD Insight, integration of Hadoop and Hive, we have that option over here. Integration with Cassandra, we have via Cosmos DB. Integration with MongoDB, 
we have it via uh, Cosmos DB once again, right? Integration via Redis, we have a separate service for Redis cache within Azure. Kafka has a, uh, also has an integration via event hubs and event grid. Right, so there are number of implementations that you have within Microsoft Azure and other open source resources which are available. Once it comes to common tools, and like I said earlier, not to forget that each of these tools, say for example, if you're connecting to HD Insight, you can use Apache Hive, you can use Splunk, you to connect to it, you can use Impala to in interact with HD Insight resources, right? So these common tools, we can still go and integrate or still go ahead and connect to your Azure, Azure environment, Azure resources, get that information, get that data from there. From data analysis perspective, we have Power BI desktop over here where we can make use of data visualization. See, like I said earlier, most of the work is being done, but unless you showcase what is there behind the scene, people will not be able to make sense out of it. Correct? So you, you can say that I have been working on this data. I have cleansed this data. You all can make decisions, right? All things, yes, no, maybe kind of things. But unless people see this in action, they will not be able to believe you, whatever your work you have done. And especially once you're talking about end users, they would want to see something in terms of UI. They would want to see something which is, uh, what do you say? <laughs> in simple terms, people call it as self-service. So can I have something called a self-service BI? Using which I can drill down, I can dig deeper, look at what are the core concern areas, what are the KPIs and KRAs which are being assigned to people, and how did they perform over it? So Om Prakash, as an AVP delivery, what is the feedback of the entire organization? Customer surveys have been concerned. What are customers saying about Om Prakash? Om Prakash would say, boss, I did one of the best things I could do, right? But what are the scores saying? What are the GPAs saying? What are the feedback by the customers saying? And it's not just about feedback from one or two people or one or two customers. It will be a generic feedback from everybody. Now, keeping these kind of inputs in mind, keeping these kind of analysis results in mind, we'll be able to make sure we make decisions which are uh, which will enhance the quality of the quality of the session delivery, which will help us to reach out to more number of audiences. We should be able to solve problems of more and more people, right? So when people are looking at a problem in mind, saying that whom should we talk to about this? Okay. So Manish and Rupesh, they had done a session for us. Om Prakash did the session. So I think these are good guys. They may be able to solve our problem. So let's discuss our concern with them. Whether it is in terms of learning solutions, whether it is in terms of consulting solutions. Like I mentioned earlier, we also have a consulting division with us. So uh, all our trainers work with consulting team to make sure they have a real world experience on data analysis, Right, data architecting. In terms of Microsoft solutions, what Microsoft provides is services in terms of Power BI desktop, right? Power BI portal. And we also have a report builder over here. So using these tools, using these resources, which is being given, number of organizations can benefit from it. So whether it is top management, mid management, both of them can quickly see the outcomes. What has been the, uh, after so much of effort, what is the outcome that we have received? Okay, and that's what will make sense. So if you look at the data analyst from day in day out areas, what they are working with is understanding the domain areas, applying appropriate statistics, appropriate logic wherever needed, Right. Look at the domains which is there with them. They would have keyed in all the information, entered all the details in terms of and making sure they are representing this information properly. They may be doing programming for creating pipelines. 
right? Using rep or using set of tools to cleaning up the data, generating the right set of information over there. And final step, like I said, is visualization and conveyance. Conveyance here would mean how do you convey the information? Whether it's a good news, bad news, learning news, what are the learnings that we're taking out of it? Right? That will play a very, very important role. I already mentioned about this earlier, but I think we should put this point once again. So after the concepts are clear, we should look at in which scenarios, which options one should go for. So first thing, like I said, we should be asking questions. And second is once you have answer to those questions, how are you going to? Map it to your. Pre existing resources within Azure platform. So once you are looking at your environment. Right. Guys, I need your attention over here. So once you're looking at. Analyzing or looking at the options available. What is your problem that you are facing right now? Or as per your discussion with the customer, what do you understand is the concern on the customer side? Are they looking for compatibility format? If yes, what is the data store that they have locally available? Are they going for MySQL, PostgreSQL, MariaDB, or are they using Cassandra and MongoDB? If these are the, if compatibility format is the challenge, and you want to solve that, Microsoft says as simple. Don't worry. We already are giving you MySQL, PostgreSQL, MariaDB as an existing service. Please go ahead, migrate your data inside that. Use your currently existing tools to interact with it. Same thing holds true for Cassandra and MongoDB. But for these services, for Cassandra and MongoDB content, you have a single service given by Microsoft, which is called as Cosmos DB. Using Cosmos DB, you can create native Cassandra API. You can create native Cosmos DB API. And using the same set of tools, which we were using earlier, we can connect to this environment. Once it comes to SQL database or SQL server to be more precise. This will be for relational data, but the challenge here is not compatibility format. Right. If you're looking at semi structured data, go for Cosmos DB SQL API, which is document DB. If you're looking for SMB, you have already have a file share and you want to migrate this file share to your Azure environment. You can make use of NFS services over here, or you can go for a SMB interface. Both of these options are available depending upon what is your need. For archival solutions, so remember analysis we mentioned about. Certain times I don't need analysis. I just need to put that data, and this will be required once in 10 years, once in five years. Remember, there are a lot of compliance requirements which says, just tell me whether this data can be accessed whenever required. Yes, it can be. 24 hours, tell me. 24 hours earlier, tell me if you want to access the data. We will start the unzipping of that content because all this information will be zipped within the um, Azure environment. Okay. In terms of indexing of data, time series insights. So you have relevant options over here that we can work with. If yes, you are looking at in those scenarios, you can go for Azure Synapse, Azure Databricks, right? Azure Analytics Services. These are the options for analytics solutions. In terms of uh, file system or if you want to store audio files, video files, images and all these kind of contents, you can go for blob storage or you can go for data lake storage. Data lake storage is specialized in terms of governance policies. Right, you can store your information within data lake store. If you're looking at graph information, graph data, you can go for Cosmos DB graph API or which is also referred as Gremlin over here. In terms of transient information, transient in sense, I don't, I'm not looking for long term kind of storage. I want, I'm looking for immediate data storage and retrieval. In those cases, you can go for Redis cache. You can go for 
document db once again. These decisions will be easier to take once you have answers for all the questions. Let me stop here and go back to the Azure environment. So guys, if you look at the resource that we had created. Sample DB, right? And if you recall, there were a number of questions that we had asked. Right, so what were the questions? The questions was in terms of integration. So first thing that you'll see here is your power platform integration with Power BI, Power Apps, Power Automate. These are the options for integration. In case of compute and storage, I already mentioned about this. If you want, could if you want to change this, you can do that. If you want to capture the connection strings for your database. You can do it from here. You mentioned about creating a replica or taking a backup of the existing resources. So here I can go to the replica section. I can create a replica for my existing database. From security perspective, we said whenever we are creating any resource within the platform, we would also want to ensure there is security of these members. Right? How do you ensure security? To ensure security. To ensure security here we have options for. Server auditing, right? SQL server. Uh, auditing and database auditing. So where do you want to store this information? Audit details. Who has accessed? What content? Where do you want to store that information? I can create. Okay. Right, so I can specify what kind of uh, storage account I want to create for. Storing the audit information. So you can do a server level audit. You can do a database level audit. Taking a slightly longer. Just give me a moment. Yeah, it's done. So I have enabled Azure SQL level auditing. OK, so once it's been done, let me go ahead and save this. I can enable the same on server level as well. So if I do it on server level, all databases which are associated with the same server, it will enable it for all of them. If you want to be very, very specific for every database as well, you can enable on database level also. Along with this, from a security perspective, I already mentioned about setting a server firewall. So you need to add an IP address from where you want to allow the user to connect to it. 
another important aspect that we have in context of security is data discovery and classification. Right. So here what we have, what we can do is we can take up the suggestions which is given by Microsoft. We can apply those suggestions. Dismiss those suggestions. It's it's up to you. De depending upon. What is the domain that you have? What are the options that you have over here? Whether they are relevant to you, are they making sense or not? Right. So based on that, you can. Specify the sensitivity of each of the fields. So which data is confidential, which data is non confidential. If you want to add specific masking over here, you can do that as well. The options for adding a mask. So if you look at from an administration perspective, most of these options, most of these uh, ele elements or entities you have by default available on the Azure portal. Correct? Any kind of recommendations, which is which earlier was job of a DBA, all these things you'll be able to see as a available member here. I'm not saying it is. It, it might be the best one, but at least some information which is relevant to y'all and um, it, it can make sense out of uh, sense for y'all. Right? So those details you can see here. It's not very, very elaborate right now. The reason being we have not executed too many queries. So if we go to each and every table, we start executing those queries, right? There are applications we are connecting to it, performing join queries and all those things. Then it will be more elaborate. If we have more information saying that these queries worked faster versus the second set of queries which did not work that fast. OK, and once that keeps happening for time and again, since we are capturing all this information, you'll be able to get details out of it. And based on that, you'll be able to administer these things better. Proceed ahead. Now moving on to the. Third and very important section over here. As far as RDBS is concerned, so I showed you all from a uh, service level perspective, what are the options available from a database instance perspective? What are the options available? Now going ahead in terms of details inside it. Moment. Meenal, are you there? Sorry, I. She may have got disconnected. No issues. Let's proceed ahead. So as part of the RDBMS components that we have over here. Right, there could be different use cases where RDBMS will make sense for us. Whether it is in terms of IoT solutions, whether it is in terms of OLTP solutions like we mentioned earlier, or even as one of the data sources for data warehouses. That's also where it will make sense. Right? So in terms of uh, IoT devices, most typically most of the information is non-relational, right? But there could be some information which could be structured and consistent. So you'll have to choose which of the devices have standard set of information. Secondly, OLTP kind of systems. Maximum of them are going into RDBMS right now. And the third one where we said data warehouse, even though you have unnormalized data. Even that information is part of your data warehousing solution. OK, so this is the uh, diagram which I was talking about ER diagrams. So whenever you get a customer's requirement, what we start off with is looking at an ER diagram. Or, uh, sorry, creating an ER diagram with appropriate entities being defined, number of uh, attributes for each of those entities, what is the relationship between each of these entities, and that helps us to get started with it. And then we go ahead, normalize, and all those steps over here. Now, while we are doing this process, 
we are very very clear that we want to resolve all the challenges or the constraints that we have right so each normalization would help us answer those questions answer those queries for insert update delete so once it comes to your entity finalization attribute and relationship finalization the outcome of that would be your tables right so as far as each and every table is concerned we'll have your rows and columns your columns will define a type or data type over here and using that type or using that information that we are saving we can specify whether that information needs data masking whether that information uh, that that we have stored is it uh, sharing some of the unwanted information right so that details will be here right so those kind of protection implementations we can do it on the table level uh, while i was dis uh, discussing about these elements i also mentioned about just give me a moment i was also mentioning about encryption so here if you see if i go to my management studio i'm not sure if i have the same details here no i don't have it but in sql server management studio i have options for encrypting columns so for column encryption we can specify which columns i want to encrypt the something like phone number password hash i want to increment these members and if you look at the options available you have options for options like deterministic you have options like randomized right so you can specify what kind of encryption that you want to apply over here for each of for each of the columns that we have so how do you want to go ahead do you want to auto generate the column master key for using the windows certificate store or you want to use azure key vault okay so azure key vault is a separate service that we have over here within our uh, uh, azure platform where you can store your security keys where you can right so we can go ahead and create a key vault service which can store keys which can store certificates and it can store one more member now what is that so one is keys second is certificates and what is the third aspect over here third aspect basically secrets right so as far as these secrets are concerned this is more like a password that you are st uh, storing or any kind of connection string that you are storing over here as far as keys are concerned keys are basically uh, the encryption decryption keys that we are storing over here okay let's go ahead let's do a sign in over here the problem is i don't have a key vault right now so i need to create a key vault within that key vault i have to give permissions right as far as decryption of this value is concerned this decryption will happen by using an application so i need to write an application code and using that application code i can decrypt this information right so these are set of security implementations from the table perspective and uh, specifically going to columns columns inside it as far as 
entities are concerned. For each resource that you are creating, customers, customer phone numbers, right? What your primary key or secondary key that you would want? I already mentioned about normalization, right? Which will help you to uh, avoid data duplication and improvise the data quality. So I don't want to get into this conversation right now because of shortage in time. Most of you are aware about the normalization principles. But once this data is being normalized, you will have to make sure we associate a relationship over here so that whenever we have to uh, perform inserts, updates, or if you want to retrieve information, right, we can write select queries and using join queries, we can get it from relevant tables over here. Now, once it comes to retrieving this information at much more faster pace, we can create respective partitions. We can use indexes. We can use views over here. These are some of the tools as part of the RDBMS solutions, which can help us to extract information faster. Right? So I know that this is a kind of information which I will need on day to day basis. I will need it quickly. Right? So in these scenarios, I can go ahead, create a respective view for it and allow the user to retrieve data from that view itself. Which will again help us to improvise in terms of performance of the application. OK. Anyone any questions still here? I think there was one somebody who was asking a question. Yeah, um, I was actually yeah, asking, um, what is the difference between relational and non-relational, which you've mentioned in the beginning? <clears throat> okay, no problem. So I hope that question has got answered. Yes, now that it has. Thank you. Anyone else? Any questions? So while I was talking about relational data, right? There are number of aspects in terms of non-relational data as well. In terms of non-relational data, like I earlier mentioned about OLAP services, right? Online analytical processing. In terms of non-relational collections, we'll have multiple entities with same set of fields or different fields. Here, what we're talking about is a flexible schema. Now the question over here is in which kind of scenarios will we go for a non-relational data? Is there a possibility there? The answer is yes. There are a lot of requirements. Let me give a quick example here. As far as your employee contact is concerned, how many of people believe that every individual will have only one phone number or only one email address? It's not true, right? So there could be somebody who has two, more than two or more than three phone numbers, more than one or two email addresses. So in these cases, how are you? Says when it comes to communication, we would want to store maximum information about that user, correct? So in those scenarios, having a structured data storage may not be relevant in all scenarios. So we want to make sure we capture all these details. Right? Can you tell me how many responses you have for a specific blog? Five responses, 10 responses, 15 responses. And what will be the content type of the feedback or the content type for the response which somebody is giving? The customer can upload an image, can upload, customer can upload a, a picture, one, two, three, or 10 pictures. Customer can go, the next person who is responding can upload a video over there. Right, so you can't control that. So there are a number of such applications where having a fixed schema will not allow you to go beyond a certain point. It will, it, it will reach a situation where for every blog response, you'll have a separate table. Right, which makes your life really difficult to extract information from all these options and show the final result. That's why 
there will be different sort of information which can there will be large amount of information which will not be you will not be able to store and retrieve effectively into a rdbms solution that's why non relational data is very very important so if you look at the options available for it like preeti was mentioning about you have number of no sql database types where you can use couch db mongo db where the data model is set of documents that you are storing correct so if you are the strength over here that you see is incomplete data or schemaless data that you are storing but if you look at the weakness over here the query performance can be a weakness and i also mentioned about different consistency options right because it may go for a eventual consistency here you have to write code especially in case of mongodb once it comes to your sql data store uh, sorry uh, sql api for cosmos db there i can write sql queries but not with mongodb if you look at columnar data store like cassandra you can have fast lookups over here but you need to work with low level apis correct in terms of key value pair that you have your redis uh, redis cache we have over here in azure where you have fast lookups again the data has no schema right so most of these resources that you will see in terms of graph based databases you have gremlin over here in cosmos db where you can create number of nodes and retrieve values from these nodes again from a use case perspective you can look at retail and marketing information web and mobile analytics that you are looking for right any iot information or telemetry data that you are looking at all these things can be stored inside a non relational data store any kind of social applications that you are looking at all of these are best candidates for non relational data so if you are looking at some of the devices lot of your iot devices or gaming devices from where the data has to be stored right so you can store that information within cosmos db associate that with your azure functions which is an option for serverless compute right and once you have that event being triggered what actions you want to perform on that you can do that and send back the response to the customer right so number of places you can make use of non relational data semi structured data so you have different set of uh, options over here in terms of the data types so you can have json days information avro avro information right parquet information uh, parquet some plain uh, right you have orc format so which type of format you want to save your data into especially once it comes to sql api mongo api they both of them support json or bison based documents i already mentioned about some of these details key value store your column stores azure table is basically an example for key value store in terms of document based database you have your sql api mongo api for columnar store you have cassandra api now each of them will have their own advantages so depending upon what is your customers expectation what are they looking for you can choose from these options over here okay so i've already mentioned about these details and its relevance to cosmos db now one of the implementations by i was talking about sql as a solution i parallelly went ahead created a resource for cosmos db is it ready by now yes it is it's online so here i can go to my cosmos db environment and if you will see there are options for 
accessing this content using Node.js, Python, Java, you decide which environment you want to, which programming language you want to access it. Okay, let's go. Let me go ahead and create the items container over here. Like how we have option for sample database. Similarly, here you have options for creating a database, right? And I would not say it's a database actually. It's a collection. It's a collection of documents. So once it is done, like you have data explorer. Similarly, we also have a data explorer here where we can go and see the contents, where we can see the information. OK, so within my account. I have. To do list. And within that I have items collection. Right. It's empty right now. Let me I can go and upload set of JSON files. Or I can add a new item over here. Whatever. I want here. Our contact information I want. This is a key value pair again, JSON document. My email address. Right, so whatever details one would want to mention within the document, we can do that. Save this. It will add additional information to help retrieval of values faster. So whatever more number of items I would want to add, I can do that. One zero zero two customer addresses. Delhi. Customer name is Rupesh. Right, so I have two in entries over here. Let me show you. now each of these things are not table entries. They are not rows and columns, but these are documents. Select start from C. Where C dot customer address is equal to Can you see this? So even if it is document, it can understand the query language, which is SQL query language and help you get the required document. The reason why this is happening is because the API which I'm using is called as a SQL API. OK. So this is a quick look in terms of how Cosmos DB using one of the APIs will work. I would uh, recommend. Rupesh and Manish to create uh, another session where we can go into details of Cosmos DB. Where we can discuss about the graph API, where we can discuss about the Mongo API and where I can show you some of the migration to these solutions, especially people who are interested in no SQL kind of environments. OK, OK, Prakash, noted. So thank you very much, everyone. That's all from my side for today's session. So Rupesh, I hand over to you. Thank you very much, everyone. Yeah, Manish, all yours. Uh, yes, Om Prakash, one second. Huh? Uh.
Hello, Rupesh, are you there? Yes, sir. Sorry, there was some network issue. Just a moment. Uh, so, everyone, please uh, pay attention here for a moment. I'll be uh, real quick here and I'll share my screen. So, please just pay attention. Uh, First of all, uh, I want to thank uh, Om Prakash sir for this wonderful session on Microsoft uh, Azure Data Fundamentals DP900 certification. Also, thank you everyone uh, for joining today's webinar. Uh, I've already shared the feedback link in the chat box. So I'll request everyone to please uh, fill the feedback form because your feedbacks are important to us. And please check my screen. I'm just sharing it. This is the uh, training calendar that we have. Uh, these are the topics we uh, cover. So anyone is interested in any of the trainings, they can contact me. The number is already shared in the chat box. Uh, so this is our webinar calendar for the for the year. So as I said at the start of the session, uh, we have the next webinar on DP 300 certification that is happening on 25th of September. Uh, the timing will be uh, 10, 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Uh, 12 noon uh, to our session. Uh, similar to this, we have also a full day workshop on DP 900 certification. Uh, you can uh, register, for, register for the same. We'll be sharing the link in the chat box. So now you can easily and smartly boost your career. Simply update your Microsoft skills and certifications on LinkedIn and showcase your talent to other professionals who belongs to relevant technology. So uh, you have to just update your skills. And if you have done any uh, certification recently, you just have to update the certification under uh, license and certification section. And uh, there is an, a special raffle contest conducted by Microsoft for which you have to uh, submit your entry. The uh, link will be shared in the feedback. You can check the last section of a feedback form. You will find the uh, link just after up updation of your LinkedIn profile. You can just submit the entry there. So you can update your badge also if you have done any certification as I said already. You can follow us on uh, different social media platforms. We keep on uh, updating uh, various informative content on the social medias. Uh, the recording for this session will be uploaded on YouTube channel. So please do subscribe to the channel. We'll be sharing the link in the chat box. So thank you everyone once again for attending this session. Uh, have a great weekend. Thank you very much everyone. Thanks Rupesh. Thank you Manish. Thank you so much. Sir. Thank you so much.